Welcome back to the channel. Today I have something truly captivating in store for you. We'll be delving into the archives of World War II combat footage, offering rare glimpses into history's most tumultuous era. I'll be providing insightful commentary alongside the remastered footage, shedding light on the intensity and significance of each moment captured. This collection is nothing short of remarkable, and I believe it's an essential viewing experience for all enthusiasts of war and history alike. Starting our footage today, we delve into one of the most brutal and significant tank battles in history, the Battle of Kursk, specifically the clash at Prokhorovka. This showdown, which occurred from July 5th to August 23rd, 1943, pitted Germany's elite Waffen-SS divisions against the Soviet Union's formidable tank forces. Prokhorovka, a small village southwest of Kursk, became the focal point of this titanic struggle. On July 12, 1943, thousands of tanks from both sides clashed in a chaotic melee. Among the notable figures were General Paul Hauser of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps and Soviet tank Ace Lieutenant Colonel Mikhail Katukov leading the 1st Guards Tank Army. Despite the ferocity of the German assault, the Soviet defenders, supported by the rugged T-34 tanks, held firm. The battle ended in a strategic stalemate but shattered the myth of German invincibility and marked a turning point in the war. In this segment we see the Panzer IVs heading to the battlefield. These Panzer IVs belong to the 1st SS Panzer Division, specifically Rudolf von Ribbentrop a very renowned panzer ace during this critical battle. During the preparations of Kursk, many Soviet soldiers were given the grim task of going to the very front of the field and placing the TM-35 AT mine. Also fun fact, the Soviets used an estimated 222 million mines in World War II. The Soviet Union surpassed any modern nation in the use of mines in combat history. Kursk, German air support was much more significant than people think. The reason German tanks had the swastika flag on the front of the tank was actually to tell friendly Stukas that they were friendly because the Soviets had a reputation for taking and using captured German armor. This man has been seen before in different footage of German combat. But this man is more important than you might think. His name is Werner Wolf, an Obersturmfuhrer in the 1st SS Panzer Division and was actually the right-hand man to the infamous Joachim Piper. Werner Wolf would achieve the Knight's Cross during this battle for killing a Soviet commander with his dagger, but Wolf would end up dying in combat during Operation Spring Awakening of 1945. The German soldiers at Kursk actually had real trouble with Soviet snipers. One German diary before stated, We can't even lift our heads from here one second a bullet fly by and the next second a fellow has dropped dead. We must move when we are being shot at. I think by this he means Germans were able to move in the cover of the smoke when tanks were firing. But yeah, during the fight Soviet snipers became a real issue for the German grenadiers. Most people who talk about the Battle of Kursk talk about the position of ground units and tank battles and forget it was one of the largest air battles as well, with one of the noticeable and best German aces taking part Hans Ulrich Rudel. But the Soviets lost a massive amount of planes and even the German took a large loss from the air battles above. Hi. 
and yes, one of the top Panzer aces at the Battle of Kursk was Michael Whitman. He was in the heavy Panzer company armed with Tiger Ones of the LSSA Age SS Panzer Grenadier Division. It is said that Michael killed 8 T-34 tanks and 7 AT guns on the 5th of July alone, as everyone knew that Michael was a very fierce tank ace and a force to be reckoned with. The very main reason the Soviets lost nearly 1 million men during this battle was because of the stupid human wave tactics they used. One must understand the sheer amount of manpower the Soviets had was absolutely astonishing, man after man. They would usually be on top of the tanks and once they were engaged, they would run like hell off the tanks to cover or straight to the enemy positions. Here is Manstein awarding one of his soldiers at Kursk. Many believe that German failure at Kursk was not inevitable. For example, Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, commander of the forces in the South German sector during the engagement stated that Hitler had stopped the attack too soon a decision that he described as tantamount to throwing away a victory. However, many argue that even if Hitler didn't call off Kursk, Manstein could not have won the battle. But again, some even say if Hitler didn't call it off, Manstein could have potentially won the sector at Kursk. It all up to what you think. I don't think there's any definitive answer. Joachim Piper is here awarding one of his men his unit was involved in extremely hard fighting during the fight at Prokhorovka and actually performed very well. It's unknown if Joachim Piper himself was in the thick of it, but going off what I can find it is possible he was involved in the heavy fighting himself. As you can see a bayonet on top of a German soldier's rifle. Many don't know how close and brutal the fighting was here at Kursk. German soldiers were told to stick a bayonet on. Similar to the First World War, reasons for getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Soviet were a very common occurrence. The armor losses for the Soviets was actually very substantial more than you think. It's said over 6,000 armor and weapons were lost in this battle the largest amount in any battle during World War II. Here is Kurt Knispel, the greatest tank ace in history and he was present during Kursk. He was led by Oberfeld Webel Fedensack. That was to become the first company of the 503rd Heavy Panzer Battalion, which fought at Kursk as flank cover for the 7th Panzer Division. So there we have it, some of the best footage of Kursk I have ever seen and I'm glad I could cover some bits for you guys. What battles would you like me to cover next? So this brings the video to an end. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a sub and a like. It helps me a lot. Hope to see you guys soon.